Hello everyone and welcome to Fanatics Live. I am your host, my name is Mary Claire, but I do go by MC, so MC Hamner's the name, and this is my game. I will be hosting someone very special tonight. He is a rookie on the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, we are super excited to have him on. A couple weeks ago, we had an old time vet with Mike Richter from the Rangers, so now we're going the opposite way and getting a rookie on the line. So let's bring on tonight's main attraction, number 77, Kirby Doc. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey Kirby, what's up? Not much, just hanging out, uh, waiting for kind of quarantine to be over and hoping things get rolling soon. Yeah, how was practice? I know we caught you right at the end of uh, skate, yeah. <laughs> skate session. How was it? It's good. Um, it's good. I got a good group to skate with back home and uh, it's nice being around buddies and families and friends. Yeah, I'm sure that's nice to just kind of get back in a regular groove of things a little bit, something that feels a little bit comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the masks suck a little bit, but uh, you got to do it because you got to be safe out there. Oh, yeah, that's right. I wouldn't, I forgot about that. Um, well, speaking of joining a professional team, obviously this is pretty new to you as well. You're almost a year in officially. Your your debut was, uh, what, October 20th? Yeah, it's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, you're coming up on a year. So the the drafts happening over the last couple of days, and you got to see some friends go, and you know, dreams get made. Um, yeah. Let's go back to Vancouver, 2019. What was the the main thing running through your mind? Uh, I was pretty nervous. Um, you almost got too nervous to the point where you're, where you're being a little bit mean to your family and friends that came there to support you. You're just want to kind of get the moment over with but uh when it happens it's, it's pretty surreal i know for me i kind of blacked out and i don't really remember too much of the, the rest of the night but um it was fun obviously it's a huge relief you work so hard to to get there but uh obviously i had a couple of buddies in this year's draft go and i was happy to see them and uh, hopefully they got to enjoy it and covid circumstances but yeah, a little bit different with it happening virtually, but I think everybody's adjusted pretty well with the times, and it's. I don't think anything would take away from how special it is to get drafted. Yeah, exactly. I think, like you said, it's a pretty unique and special opportunity, but uh, to get up stage and, and walk mm -hmm. on it and take that picture was, uh, was pretty cool. I think the main thing going through my mind would be like, don't fall, don't trip, smile, wave, look good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Things. Yeah, we were all pretty nervous. I know we were talking earlier before the draft, like uh, about our our pits, our pitters, like our sweat stains on our shirts and stuff, and sitting <laughs> in the seats. But uh, it went pretty good, actually. Yeah, and I I saw a video. I guess you were the first person to call uh, one of your new teammates and introduce him to the team and introduce yourself, uh, Lucas Reichel. I might not be pronouncing that yeah, right. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, how, how was it to call him in the moment of him getting drafted? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I still remember last year when I got the text from Kane and Taze and Seabrook and uh, how surreal that feeling was. And to kind of have a chat with him and get to know him a little bit was, was pretty good. He seems like a really nice kid and, and he wants to get things rolling here. And uh, from what I've heard, he's, he's a really good player and he's going to help us out in the future. So I'm excited to get him over here and, and start playing with him. Yeah, I think that was a, a great step that you took just to reach out to him and let him know that you're excited to have him on the team. Um, your hockey uh, abilities are probably born into the family from what I've learned about <laughs> your brother playing and your little sister playing. Uh, how has hockey brought you closer as siblings and what kind of a role model are you trying to be for Colton and Callie? Uh, yeah, it's definitely brought us closer. Uh, we're, we're pretty competitive around the house, and uh, when we do things, uh, sometimes it's a little too competitive, and parents have to step in and kind of separate us, but uh, yeah. it's a lot of fun growing up with them, obviously. Colton's two years younger than I am, and uh, Callie's five years, but uh, we, we all get along, and our friend groups are, are pretty much the same, but um, as an older brother, you're just trying to set a good example of, of who you are and how good of a person you want to be to help them and achieve their goals and dreams and I think the way I kind of look at it is I'm going to do everything I can to, to pursue my dreams and goals but at the same time if, if they need help and have questions I'm going to be right there to help them out and 
show them that uh, anything's really possible. That's awesome. I think they're probably feeling pretty uh, cool that their big brother is Kirby Doc. And so <laughs> they have a, a cool big brother to look up to and a, a good mentor in the sport that they also play. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I mean, they teach me things too. Uh, yeah. Especially with my little sister. She's, she's really taught me a lot about how she sees the world and same with Colton. Um, they're both a little bit different than I am and unique in their own ways. So it's, it's cool to see things how they see it and kind of have that banter back and forth that we do. Yeah. Well, since you've been in Chicago, you mentioned Taves and Kane and Seabrook. Uh, they've really taken you under their wing and are trying to like show you the ropes on how to be a pro hockey player um, and really start out your professional career. So from your learnings from them, what do you consider being essential to being a good leader? Uh, yeah, obviously you can, you can add Duncan Keith to that list and, and Corey Crawford, mm -hmm. those kind of five guys were their core for so long and um, it was a great learning experience. I tried to take the best habits from, from each of those guys and bring it into my own self and as a player and a person. But to be a good leader, I think you just got to be true to yourself and, and stick to what works for you. I know all those guys are different where uh, Steve Brook and Caves kind of lead vocally and um, are really talkative and in the room trying to amp guys up and Kaner is just more shows you what's right and how to live your life like a pro uh, mm -hmm. day in and day out and uh, same with Dunk and Crow uh, they just are true professionals they show up to the rink every day and, uh, and are ready to go and I think that's a big thing that I noticed was coming to the rink for practice and with a purpose and trying to get better every day and uh, but uh, I took a lot from those guys and I learned that you have to find ways to cater to everybody on the team and I think that's what right. Jonathan Taze does so well is he has those little conversations with uh, everybody on the team every morning and sees Getting how they're doing. Getting to know you it. individually. Yeah. 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 I think that's that's something that I really took away this year is uh, just being a good person and checking in and, and making sure that uh, everybody's doing good individually. Well, I love that. And I, it seems like you have great examples to uh, mold, mold yourself and how you want to play and how you want to carry yourself. So I, I don't have any worries <laughs> for you. But yeah. my questions weren't too hard, were they? Those weren't too bad. No, they weren't. They weren't okay, too. so now we're going to pass it to our, our guests on the line. Their questions might be a little bit harder than mine because <laughs> um, they're they're in the the fandom. They're, they're in Hawks Nation. So mm -hmm. without uh, further ado, let's bring on Thomas. And he, he told me that he was zero years old when he went to his uh, <laughs> first Blackhawks. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Hey, Thomas. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good, you? Very good. Can't complain. <laughs> so how was it playing in the bubble this year? Uh, it was good. I don't know. For me, it was, it was a lot easier than guys that had kids and, and a wife to go back home to. But uh, I just kind of hung out and got to know the guys a little bit better and, and enjoyed it. Um, it was cool to be around your teammates. But at the same time, it got a little awkward after games when you'd be in the elevator with the other team and stuff. But other than that, I, I really had a lot of fun in it. How was it adapting to, like, I guess the, uh, not having any fans and feeding off like their energy. Cause I'm assuming playing home in Chicago would feed you off a lot, give you a lot of energy, right? Yeah. For sure. We kind of missed the Anthem. Uh, I think that was kind of the coolest thing was, was how cool the Anthem was, but uh, it kind of took away from it a little bit, but uh, at the same time um, it kind of helped us out. You know, it's, there's no really home ice advantage, especially playing against Edmonton and, being in Edmonton, it was it was a little bit nicer that way, but um, it definitely took away from the experience. Did you guys have to have like when you guys went back to the hotel or whatever? Did you guys have to be in your own room, or did you guys have like one roommate? No, we had our own rooms and stuff, which was which was nice. Usually, I have to share a room, and on the road, I share a room with uh, Alex Nylander. Awesome. So uh, yeah, him and I get along pretty good, and uh, Bolquist is usually in in our room quite a bit. So us three are kind of joint at the hip and, and hang out quite a bit on when we're on the road. And quick question, how, what was your probably biggest moment in the WHO when you played for Portland? Like if yeah. you could one. Yeah. Um, well, I played for Saskatoon, not Portland. Not Portland. My apologies. <laughs> That's good. But, uh, uh, Oh, I think for me, the coolest thing was, uh, we had a kid, that kind of helped us out our second year uh, who was involved in the Humboldt bus crash. 
So to kind of get to know him and his story and, and who he was as a person was, uh, was pretty unique and pretty special to be a part of his, uh, his journey. But so I, uh, personally, that was, that was pretty cool to get to know a guy like that and how strong of a person he was and that, uh, no matter how bad your days get, uh, there's always something worse going on, but, uh, he was fun to, to be around and hang out with, but the best thing on the ice was just being a, a young kid living out your dream, playing junior hockey. I mean, you're away from home, kind of no rules, doing what you want, but uh, it's uh, it was a lot of fun playing in Saskatoon. That's awesome. Kirby, you can go ahead and get that photo. Let's autograph it for Thomas, and then let's show him his little signature. I think he, he wants to get that, that debut date on that, yeah. on that photo. <laughs> Let's show her off. Oh, it looks great. Hey, that's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. Great. Thanks, Thomas. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. These these guys, they're excited to meet you. <laughs> um, let's bring on Mark. And his favorite thing about hockey is the ability that the players have <laughs> to fight like all hell on the ice and then as soon as the game's over everybody shakes hands and is super respectful which i think is a very cool aspect about hockey so let's bring on mark hi kirby hey mark how's it going good how are you i'm doing pretty good awesome thanks for taking the time to do this yeah no worries that's pretty cool that you, you like the fact about the fighting and how competitive we can get but at the end of the day we get off the ice and we shake hands and, and talk to one another yeah, it's cool. I, I I took up hockey at the age of forty two, so yeah, yeah. I think I you're know. supposed to start playing golf or tennis at that age. Yeah, I know. I know how it is. Like, I mean, even even this year and previous years, I've battled against guys uh, on the ice, and then in the summer, we end up training together and become pretty good friends. But uh, on the ice, there's no there's a saying: there's no such friends on the ice. So yeah, that's we're right. War out there. Yep. Well, I was curious, um, what was it like? Uh, how'd you kind of have to adapt or what did you have to change when you made the, the jump to the NHL with the physicality and, and the speed of the game at, at the NHL level? Uh, well, for me being a bigger guy, I, I kind of already had that advantage with size. Um, I was fast enough and quick enough. I think the biggest thing for me was just the strength uh, of the guys. I mean, um, they're so strong in the corner and protecting pucks. And uh, it took a while for me to kind of get used to that. And once I did, I felt pretty confident in my game, obviously. Uh, I'd like a little bit more production offensively. And uh, I hope to add that to my game uh, in the next coming years and uh, to become a dominant player soon. That'd be awesome. We'll, we'll definitely be rooting for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope so for sure. I heard you spend a little time living with Siebes. Is, is that a true story? Yeah, I live with uh, I live with Brent all year. Him and his wife uh, were were gracious enough to let me live there and kind of hang out with them and be a part of their family. Uh, it was a lot of fun. They got three kids and, and three dogs, and while I was living there, and uh, so it was a busy household. Lots going on, but I grew up in in a house with two siblings and two dogs as well, and lots of stuff going on. So it kind of felt like home, and it was easy for me to adjust. Than rather being on my own and probably having my mother down every second week and help me <laughs> cook and clean my apartment. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah Kirby, you can go ahead and sign that photo for Mark as well. His is classic. He's just going with it. Good old go Blackhawks. That's right. It's a good one. And Kirby, your handwriting is pretty good. No, it's not that good. <laughs> my sister makes fun of me all the time for it. Thanks. Right on. Yeah, thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay, and for this round, we are going to go to. Da, 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 da. We're going to go to someone who got to mark something off their bucket list, and it has something to do with the Blackhawks. They got to get, attend a 2009-2010 playoff game where the Hawks went to win their their fourth Stanley Cup. So let's bring on Josh. 
Hey, Josh. Hey, Kerr. How's it going, bro? Good. You? I'm doing good, man. One in 2010. Yeah, dude. I, I got the chance to go. Uh, my fiance was not nice enough to give me an early early birthday gift. Uh, <laughs> right down there, right right behind right behind Corey, uh, like six seven rows up. It was awesome, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I was wondering, like, when you uh, when you got in the league and you first met like uh, Johnny and Patrick Kane, and what um what leadership like qualities did they they instill to help you help you in your game from two of the two of one of the goats in or, or my opinion yeah obviously they're they're both pretty down-to-earth people i think that's the biggest thing that i kind of learned is that they're just this yes i mean um obviously they're, they're tremendous hockey players and, and great people but uh first and foremost they're, they're the same person um yeah they come to the rink every day with the same attitude that they want to get better. And uh, once they step on the ice, they're super competitive with each other and they always want to beat each other. And uh, I think that was a big thing that I took away. And obviously with Johnny being a centerman, I kind of looked up to him growing up. Um, yeah, for sure. So it was kind of cool getting to know him and, and hang out with him a lot this year and getting to pick his brain and how he sees things. And But with Kaner, yeah. uh, working with him on the ice every day was – it's pretty special just to, to work on the skills and things that you may maybe not see and uh, understand, but he's, he takes the time out of his day to, to help us young kids out and to help us learn uh, to become uh, successful players in the league and, and hopefully bring another cup to, to the city of Chicago. Yeah, man. I mean, those guys are just so skilled and, and, and so smart and been watching them for years and it's amazing. Uh, how was uh how was that first goal feeling? That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty blacked out on that one too. It's a it's a pretty <laughs> nice feeling, obviously, to get it in Chicago too was yeah special in, in front of the crowd like that. Um, yeah, that crowd is special. Oh yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I I loved playing in Chicago, and hopefully, I can stay my career there. Yes, sir. Well, we got another photo for you. Kirby, um, and I have to ask you, Josh, is Coco your wife, fiance? Uh, no, actually. Okay. Uh, ever, when I was a young kid, uh, I used to when I played sports all my life, and uh, I was kind of like the crazy kid in sports, like the the Coco Puff guy from oh from the box. Oh my gosh, Coco, uh, Coco Puff. <laughs> yeah. So uh, somebody, one of my coaches, started calling me that, and then from you know age oh, ten years it. old all the way up all the way up through high school, that's just what it was. That's great. That's a great nickname. Love it. That looks awesome. That's Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, Sorry. Josh. Okay, round one, Curbs. You handled it like a freaking pro, but you are a pro, so I would I expect know, problem, nothing but... less. Um, so up next, we kind of reached out to some people on different social media outlets, and um, actually internally, we have some. We have a Chicago office, and so I, I tried to locate <laughs> the biggest fan that we had and surprise them with this. So we have a couple pre-recorded videos, and they are going to ask you a question, and you can um, sign their photos after if you want. You don't have to sign okay. them on camera, but. Uh, we will still send them a picture. So let's roll Grant and Ashley from Prospect, Illinois. Hi, Mr. Doc. My name is Grant, and this is my sister, Ashley. We're from Mount Prospect, Illinois. And I was wondering how it feels like to be playing to the NHL. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> so they wanted to know what does it feel like to be a player in the NHL? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, still something that I really hasn't sunk in, especially being a young kid and being surrounded by uh, such great players and great people in Chicago and the organization. So uh, it's something I, I definitely take for granted every day and kind of don't think about it. But uh, when I sit back and really think about it, it's a pretty cool experience. But uh, I wish that uh, can keep this thing going and hopefully COVID doesn't affect it too much longer and yeah. have to get back there and be in the city again because uh, I really love Chicago as a city and really the the buzz and the hype around the city it's a sports city and um, just get back in the rink with all the guys it would be a lot of fun do you ever just like wake up and like as soon as your eyes open are you like wow like I, I freaking made it like I made yeah. it 
Yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple times this year. <laughs> yeah, then... I just I feel like I would wake up like that every day. Um, our next video is from Brendan Budge, and he actually I've read his Twitter bio. He said his goal is to work at Barstool Sports one day. So let's see what <laughs> Brendan wants to ask. Hey Kirby, what's going on? Uh, my name is Brennan Budge. I'm from Deerfield, Illinois. And my question just is, you know, we're both 19 years old and I'm sitting and watching you and the boys play every game during the regular season. And then in the bubble, thinking to myself, you know, he's playing with Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, Duncan Keith, and you're going up against guys like Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, guys that we grew up watching and wanting to be. And just my question is, how surreal and amazing was this rookie season for you? Thank you, Kirby. Go Hawks. Have a great off season and have a great season next year. Thank you. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing was you kind of get a little bit starstruck at first, obviously. Like he's like, those are the guys we looked up to as kids and still look up to to this day. But um, it, it was a lot of fun playing against those guys. Although I never got to, to play against Sidney Crosby. I think I'm still still waiting for that one and uh hopefully hopefully that i get my turn next year because uh that'll, that'll definitely be a surreal moment yeah i've we've done a couple of events with hockey players and i feel like the names that people keep bringing up like i know them now like i know who yeah. these people are and like you actually get to go and play with these guys and i know being in the bubble was probably kind of weird but you were closer to some of these guys than you probably ever really would have been given in a normal situation yeah for sure i think uh Bolquist and i and, and neil and would walk around and we'd see guys that are older maybe more established and be like oh you see yeah, that guy like, over oh, there? yeah <laughs> yeah but, uh, <laughs> they were kind of like kids in a candy store when uh, when we we're in the bubble kind of getting to know everybody and, and meet everybody it's just pretty cool Okay, and then our last uh, submission, I finally got some girl power on this phone call. <laughs> so let's see what Allie Greenwood from Davenport wants to ask you. Hey Kirby, my name's Allie Greenwood. I'm from Davenport, Iowa. I was supposed to go see the Hawks as my first NHL game back in March for my birthday, but obviously due to Corona that didn't happen. Anyways, I wanted to know what you think your most embarrassing moment is on or off the ice during your rookie season. Good luck next season. Stay safe and go Hawks. <laughs> that sucks. You couldn't come watch the game. I mean, but uh, I we'll have to get Joe to one coming up this year. But uh, most embarrassing moment. Oh. I think maybe the way I celebrated after my first goal. It wasn't Thank a nice you. goal. By it. I just didn't. It wasn't a nice goal. And I just celebrated way too hard. But. <laughs> I don't know if that's really embarrassing. I bet it's. I probably said a couple of dumb things in the dressing room once or twice, and everybody just kind of looked at me and uh, <laughs> felt pretty embarrassed there. But uh, I think, yeah, definitely, I celebrated a little bit too hard on my first goal. I don't know if anybody would blame you for that, but I know that that feeling where it's all said yeah. and done, you're like, did I just go too hard in the paint? Like, yeah, you're just or... like, oh my, like I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that we got to reach out to some people and let them um, join the show. Hopefully they're watching and um, we'll get those pictures autographed and we will send those to you. Um, let's bring in our next group of meet and greet guests. We have some more people on the line. Um, and I think Estuardo and his company are running late for soccer practice at this point, but let's bring on Estuardo <laughs> and Valentino and Sebastian are also in the car. Hey. Hey, yeah. go Hawks. <laughs> How are you um, guys? Kirk, getting yourself good? Doing good. So, um, obviously the heartbreaking news today that Corey Crawford is no longer a Blackhawk and he will be a free agent as of today. So my question is, how was Corey Crawford's attitude on the ice and what do you think the next goaltender uh, could like bring and what do you need from him on the ice and off? Oh, yeah. Obviously, Crow will be missed. Um, he was a really good guy. He's soft-spoken, but uh, he's pretty smart and, and wise with his words in the dressing room. And obviously, when he spoke up, guys pretty much listened to him. And uh, I had a lot of fun hanging out with him on the road and, and getting to know him. And uh, he's obviously it was a big part of the team in, in the past decade. And uh, I think he was He's one of the most underrated goalies in the league. I don't think a lot of people thought he was as good as he was, but 
he was uh, he was really good for a long time and uh it's it's gonna be different not seeing him around the rink obviously for the older guys it, it uh, might be a little bit more emotional and as they spent more time with him but uh obviously we're gonna miss crow but uh i don't know who the next goalie is that's not really a decision for me to make that's more for stan and uh his management group to, to figure out what we need and uh obviously it's it's going to be tough for for any goalie to kind of replace crow uh after the tenure he he had with us thank you i think oh wait you got a question valentino what do you want to say uh so my question was when you joined the nhl your first day of practice what was going through your mind and did anyone treat you like did anyone treat you like the new guy and it kind of got on your nerves? Uh, no, nothing. It didn't really get on my nerves, but uh, I just remember saying to myself, you know, you can't mess this pass up. Like it'd be going like a two on one drill with uh, Kane or Taves. And I was just so nervous to, to maybe miss the pass to them or, or something like that, that I'd always kind of like hide in the back of the line and, and wait till they went. So I didn't have to go with them just because it was, uh, was a little nerve wracking the first practice. But other than that, you kind of kind of got used to it. And, um, but, uh, no, the guys were pretty good about it and, and helped me out along the way. That's awesome. I think we have a photo for you guys. Um, this one is going to be made out to the Mira family and we have a sweet picture of the Mira family right here that they uploaded. I thought that was super cute. And Estuardo said that his bucket list item was having a wonderful family, which, made me almost cry because I miss, yeah, I miss my mom and my dad so much every day. That's, so. that's pretty cool. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. They just <laughs> hugged. Let's check out that signature. Gorgeous. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Kirby. That was awesome. That was cute. Yeah, it was. We just need a little dose of cuteness. If someone has a puppy or something, they want yeah, to bring, bring on the, the line puppy next. On. All good. Okay, and our next person actually have another picture of, of him, Michael Gopin. Yeah. And I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but those are some pearly whites. And he told me oh, yeah. that um, you might even know his his cut his cousin who's the team dentist marty marcus you ever had to I, go see marty no, no i haven't knock on wood i haven't <laughs> lost any teeth yet <laughs> so let's bring on michael well that, that's a good thing you haven't lost any teeth yet that's a, yeah an, exactly. <laughs> a little ritual or rite of passage right yeah exactly hey, nice to like meet you. yeah nice to meet you too hey, so what was your most memorable moment of your first year um I'd say Caner's the thousandth point. That was uh, that was pretty cool to be a part of and celebrate with him. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty special. Um, I think that was pretty uh, that pretty much tops the list. Yeah, that must have been a great moment uh, for everybody in the team, huh? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, as much as uh, points or individual accolades i think he kind of touched on it and and the ceremony the following day it's uh it's really a testament to all the players he's played with and the coaches he's had that have helped him and groomed him into the player he is and to see a guy like that have that much success uh, and to learn from him every day is uh it's special no doubt the uh, how so how difficult was the transition to the nhl yeah uh it's pretty difficult obviously uh, it's a lot faster and you never really know what the pace is going to be until you play a real game so you can practice as much as you want and, and play those exhibition games but uh regular season's a, a whole different animal and it's also different because you're you know you're pretty young and you're living on your own and all that stuff plus the nhl it's just hard to yeah i think that was one of the, the main reasons why i wanted to live with the seabrook family was uh not to to be alone and, and kind of be a, all over the map just to kind of have some structure and and to learn what it's like to, to be a pro. Makes sense. The, uh, does your family come down and visit, uh, watch the games a lot? Uh, they were down uh, a little bit. I know my mom was down for the mother's trip, uh, and then my dad was down maybe one or two other times. But 
uh, they're pretty busy with my other siblings and um, they knew I was in, in good hands and with the Seabrooks and with the Blackhawks organization so that they didn't really have to worry about me too much. Well, good. <laughs> Any particular player take you under your wing? Huh, yeah, uh, I had all those guys. I kind of learned from all of them, but uh, definitely Seabrook and, and Keith the most. I think I learned from them quite a bit and, and same with Taze and Kane. Well, great. That's awesome. It was awesome to we, meet you. We have a picture for you too, Michael. And um, this this inscription, I think I'm the most flattered by this one that he wants today's date signed on it and your yeah. number and your signature. I think today's a pretty cool day to remember, right? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was hyped when I saw that. It's like, yes, <laughs> we're making history today. <laughs> there you go. Very Ooh. cool. Thanks, man. There you go. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay, and our last guest, we have Tim. And the first game, the first video game he ever played was Pac-Man. I'm sure, you, what was yours? Like, probably some NHL game, if I had to guess. I'm going out on the limb. Um, My first NHL game, or not or a video, video game. game. Probably. Yeah, I guess either that or Mario Kart. Oh, that's a good one. It's classic. Yeah. I used to kick exactly. butt in PGA Tiger Woods. Man. Yeah, I, I play the new one, PGA 2K21. I yeah. play. There spent a no lot one. of time on there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's bring on Tim, Pac-Man, man. Hey, how you doing, man? Good. You, Tim? I'm well, well, well. Uh, heck of a rookie sh season there. Thank you. That's a big accomplishment. So as a kid, I guess, maybe uh, growing up, what was one of your biggest challenges? Um, and how did you overcome it as a player? Oh, that's a good one. Um, growing up in a small town, uh, a lot of people don't like to see you guys have success. So I think that was kind of the hardest thing was, was going through that and dealing with uh, jealousy at school and all that kind of stuff. But I had a good – I have a good family that, that really helped me get through that, and we're uh, we're pretty close and uh, tight knit group. But um, I'd say that was probably the hardest thing growing up was just going through that jealousy and, and not understanding all that stuff because you're so young and, and you just don't get it. Great, great. Quick question: How about uh, your rookie dinner? How'd that end up for you? <laughs> it was good. I, I had a lot of fun at our rookie dinner. We kind of did it. A, uh, our rookie dinner and Halloween party the same day. Uh, we were in LA for like three or four days, so we had a, we had a couple days off, but uh, it was a lot of fun um, hanging out with the guys. And uh, those those things are always interesting. <laughs> Lou Malnati's or huh? Gino's East? Um, I don't know. I don't really eat pizza that much, so I. I oh, you're uh, in Chicago, man. I know. I know, I don't, I know, I don't eat pizza that much. Uh, I, I usually just stick to kind of Italian food like pasta and uh, being out from out west in Canada, big steak and potatoes guy. Gotcha. Well, thanks for taking yeah. the time, man. Best of luck this year. We got Thank a photo you. for you too, Tim. Um, this cool. one's gonna be. It's gonna say, "Best of luck, Jack." Who's Jack, Tim? My nephew. Oh well, he will love this surprise. Does he know about it? No, I don't think so. Well, you're about to be the best uncle of the year. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Thanks again. Yeah, no worries, man. Let's show that one off. Beautiful. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Well, Kirby, you did great. <laughs> and before I put you in the hot seat, we are going to roll a... Um, a word from our sponsor. We have a little bit of a commercial break, so let's roll that. Introducing the FanCash Rewards Credit Card by Fanatics. Earn 6% FanCash when you shop with your card on Fanatics.com with exclusive cardholder perks and six-month special financing on purchases of $150 or more. Text now to apply or go to Fanatics.com. So today's rapid fire is brought to you by the FanCash Reward Card by Fanatics. You can check out exclusive perks and benefits if you visit Fanatics.com. 
So, back to the hard hitting questions. <laughs> I'm back. I get to be in control now. We're going to play a little rapid fire round. I'm going to tell you something quick, just the first thing that comes through your head. So, are you ready? Yeah. Your go to breakfast meal bacon and eggs. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, what do you call this? A toque. Wrong. No, it's a toque. <laughs> it's a toboggan. That's so. not a, that is not a toboggan. <laughs> this is a toboggan. At least I'm from Alabama and that's what we call it. I'm going to keep it on. Uh, your favorite American saying? Uh, it's like college. Like Say college. You gotta college. say college. It's college. It's with an O. Yeah, that's pretty good. You just said pasta, which is actually pasta. Yeah. So. Same thing. Uno reverse card <laughs> on you, Kirby. Um, your favorite family trip that you've ever taken? Uh, we should take a Mexico trip every year, but uh, we haven't done it in the last three years, I think. So that was always fun. Looking forward to that. Yeah, nothing wrong with Mexico. Um, a song that you know all of the lyrics to. <laughs> Um, uh, I'd say Some Nights by Fun. Cool. I wasn't expecting that. It's pretty yeah. good. Um, on another call, he told me it was Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus, yeah. just for the record. I know a lot of music. <laughs> <laughs> um, your first celebrity crush? Jennifer Aniston. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> I think she was my first celebrity crush. Um, something you want to do, but you don't know how to do. Oh, tie a tie. Well, yeah. Luckily, I luckily, no one has to dress fancy anymore, so yeah, you have some exactly. time. <laughs> I should learn. Okay, and then I always end it on a very controversial topic, one that's going to blow up the internet. So the last question is: Crocs, are they hot or are they not? I don't know. Like I've seen, like Justin Bieber starting to wear them, so maybe they're coming in. But me personally, I don't think I'd wear Crocs. So if Biebs does it, it's hot. Yeah, I guess. Is the, yeah, he's is kind like of like this. a trendsetter with style. I think. Yeah, it's the benchmark, I guess. Yeah. I've heard they're comfortable, but I have not taken the jump to go buy a pair. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever purchase a pair of Crocs. I don't know. I saw you rocking some Birkenstocks, though. Yeah, those aren't Crocs. Uh, there's there's slip on. I don't know. Yeah. Probably in like three months from now, we're gonna see a picture of you paparazzi yeah. pic in Crocs. <laughs> we started it. Exactly. Okay, Kirby. That's all I got for you today. You were wonderful. I'm sure all of your guests had a great time getting to talk to you. So we appreciate the time and we uh, wish you best of luck as practice keeps going and hopefully some things normalize before yeah. next season. Exactly. Yeah, it's great to meet everybody and uh, stay safe out there. And uh, looking forward to get back to playing for you guys soon. Okay. Thank you, Kirby. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Well, everyone, I know I'm dressed for for cold weather here in my toboggan, but uh, we had a great time with Kirby. If you're still watching, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks to our guests who tuned in today. I hope that we got to maybe cross another bucket list item. Um, off of your list and be on the lookout for more Fanatics Live uh, tour dates as we call them. We are hoping to book out our schedule and bring your favorite athletes into your homes. So I have a tagline. I don't know if I should keep using it, but I'm just going to do it anyway, unapologetically. Signing off, MC. Kazam. <laughs>